And he joins us from the Super Bowl. And, uh, Shime, you got to bring him up. Hey, Nick, good morning. What's going on, guys? How we doing? Great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Uh, you know, the mountain time as opposed to Pacific time makes a huge difference. Yes. Only two hours of a time difference here. Yeah, week has been week has been actually really fast. When I joined you guys from Vegas, that week felt like it lasted like 10 years. This week has actually flown by. So, like, one more show today. We fly back tomorrow, have the shows on Sunday, then I work on Monday, and then I'll see you in a week. So excited to take some vacation now coming up after football season. Uh, um, odds that Michael Irvin returns to the site of the hotel incident uh, <laughs> at any time this week. Like this week or like in his life? <laughs> uh, I'll go with this week. Will they bring him back? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I don't know, man. Zero? One percent? Okay. How could they, how could they, I mean, whether, whether or not he's guilty or not, which I have no idea about anything that happened, how could they possibly, in the court of public opinion, how could that happen? Well, so I would say that's like... Very, very low chance of my unless something new has happened that I'm unaware of. Well, he filed a hundred million dollar lawsuit against the hotel and the woman. Yeah, that seems to me like the type of thing that would need some time to play out, as opposed to like forty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they could just settle it with like a free suite or something. Like, all right, we screwed up um, <laughs> for the rest of your life. I don't know. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that like like Pro Football Hall of Famer Michael Urban will be satisfied with a free suite at some like four star hotel in Phoenix. Oh, that's a late checkout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very late. <laughs> Unlimited mini bar Ooh, or, or okay. uh, in-room fridge access. Yeah. Now we're talking. Maybe, maybe, or maybe it should be limited. <laughs> Wasn't it like a... <laughs> yes! So nailed it. Wasn't it a residence in, though? I mean... It, uh, uh, Radisson? I mean, do they why even have they put Michael That's Irving a in a Radisson? <laughs> yeah, do they even have mini bars in there? Or they think they just have a fridge with nothing in it. I enjoy a vodka cranberry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, gotta, well, I, I feel like we won here. We're because I'm I'm not doing the show from Radio Row. We're from the BetMGM Sportsbook. I'm staying at something called the Wigwam Resort. Like okay. shout out to Wiggy. All right. Um, I have stayed yeah, there. Like, are you in one? Of, I've stayed there. Are you in one of the like? The, are you in one of the separate like the little self-contained like uh, sweet things they have where it's your own building? Uh, no, but I've walked, I walked past one this morning on okay. my humble brag on my way to work out. Yeah. Uh, but yes, but no, but like this place is great. It's I feel like I won here. That's yes. one of my favorite, one of my all time favorite places. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. Oh, very oh. pretty. And the golf yeah. there is fantastic. Like when I was told like, Hey, like you're going to go stay at the wigwam. I'm like, do I need to get a gun? <laughs> and now like, <laughs> right. now like apparently this is pretty great. So awesome. <laughs> all right. I mean, listen, keep working hard. You'll be in uh, one of the self-contained suites at some point. But um, Yeah, you know, yeah, right. maybe. Uh, um, well, uh, Shime, what do you want to get to first? I I'm, suppose I'm let's go straight game, right? Yeah, before let's start we, with the game and prop. the total here. Yeah. Uh, Nick, w- have you decided on a side here for the game, and do you have a lean on the total at all? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not going to bet the side of the game, the full side of the game. Uh, the bet that I feel most confident in, I'm going to bet the Eagles in the first half. Um, Eagles first half money line, minus 120. So there are two different bets that you can place. You can either bet Eagles minus a half in the first half, which means they need to be winning by one or a hundred. doesn't matter, but they need to be winning in order to win the bet. If you bet the first half money line and they're tied at the end of the half, you get your money back. So I'd prefer to do that and pay a little bit more and just feel, take a little risk out of the equation here. But we have seen Philly be one of the best first half teams, like literally in the history of the National Football League this year. And like maybe like the singular greatness of Mahomes and also Travis Kelsey can lead the Chiefs back in the second half. Like I think that's very possible, which is why I don't really like feel comfortable like betting the, the actual 60 minute game here. Maybe I'll do like a Chiefs second half bet. But I think Philly's talent advantage, like at literally every position on the field, except for quarterback and tight end, I think will kind of manifest itself in the first 30 minutes of the game. Eagles holding a lead at the end of the first half and then can kind of like see where it's going from there. Like, is this more like Super Bowl 54 with like with, with the or Super Bowl 53 with the Niners and the Chiefs when Kansas City was able to complete the comeback? Or is it more like the Kansas City Tampa Super Bowl a couple of years ago where Tampa just leans on them for a whole 60 minute game? So I don't know yet. So Eagles first half will be my play and we'll take it from there. And uh, a lean on the total. I, get, I like the under a little bit in the game, and I wouldn't bet it now. It's going to go up in between now and kickoff. Like, all the casual bettors that are going to come in are going to want to bet the over, and it might win. It doesn't mean that it's going to lose. Um, so I'm going to wait and take a piece of the under, where Kansas City does not have the lightning strike offense without Tyree Till. Philly has two excellent boundary corners in Slay and Bradbury. I think Kansas City is going to have to, you know, shout out to the late Hank Strand, matriculate the ball down the field a little bit here. Philly's proclivity to run the football. I would play the under, not with supreme confidence, but that is my lean on the total. So mm. I'm actually, you and I are opposed on this then. I am on the firmly on the over in this Ooh. game. I agree with you. I think Philly is just unbelievably talented, but the five times that they have faced a uh, 
top half of the league offense or a top ten offense this season. They've given up thirty points. So mm. it's just I, you're going I think, over, Sean. Yeah, I'm going over in this game. I think they're, you're going to get a lot of points. I, I already have the over. I got the over at fifty and a half. It's now at fifty one. If you're like me and you like the over, you have to play it now. But if you're if you're on the same boat as Costos here and you like the under, I, I'm with him. You should definitely wait. Nick, what does it mean? Couple news stories yesterday about million dollar plus bets on the Eagles. Does that mean anything? No, nothing. Um, okay. All this stuff is, is nonsense. Um, like if if you're taking so like professional betters, like people that would bet a million dollars and like and actually win, like that stuff is never going to be public because the people don't want the publicity. They want to stay anonymous, right? Which is why all these sports betting content creators that claim to win all the time are frauds. Because if they did, why would they be doing 30-second iPhone videos on the first period over of the Kraken Kings game? I love you, Costa. It wouldn't happen, right? I'm just saying, no, but like, I, like, think about it. If people actually use critical thought for one second, you'd be able to realize how fraudulent and phony a lot of this stuff is. So, like, if someone's placing a million-dollar bet and the sports book or someone is tweeting it out, like, don't you think that this is, like, it's probably a rich person, right, who can afford to lose the money, who is probably a long-term losing better? And by and like the mattress Mac thing, mattress Mac makes bets like to hedge against like his like his like uh, like furniture pro- mattress promotions or whatever. Like he's not actually betting. Like this is all smoke and mirrors. It's nonsense design. Like like it's like a, it's you're basically like like shaking like like car keys in front of a baby. Like oh come here and look at this shiny new object. It means absolutely nothing. So you're telling us that Julian Edelman didn't actually put up seventy thousand dollars of his own money. Oh, no, I'm sure he did, but he's, oh. he's a rich, long-term losing better, I'm sure. See, I told you. Like, I bet. He can, he can afford to lose the money. Yeah. It doesn't, it's no sweat to him if he loses it. And he, I guarantee, like, I doubt, like, you know how hard it is to win at sports betting consistently? Like, Julian Edelman does not win. Like, you, over the course of his betting career, he will lose. And that's okay, because over the 20 years that I've been betting on sports, I am definitely a loser also. All good. <laughs> um, um, what about any props that you like? For Sunday. Oh man, we got there's there's a lot here. This is like the fun like on field handicap of the game. Um, so you know Philadelphia has the two excellent cornerbacks right on the outside, Slay and Bradbury. I, I think Kansas City's path to victory here in this game, or at least offensive success, is going to be over the middle of the field, right? I don't think it takes a genius to figure this out, and I think that manifests itself in the form of two, maybe three players. Um, the third is Kadarius Tony, who I think has like is like basically like slight Debo Samuel. Like, puts on, like, 20 pounds of muscle and, like, a little less injury prone. And he's one of the most electric players in the league. 27 and a half is his receiving yards prop. He could go for, like, 100 in this game if he stays healthy throughout the entire game. Got a ton of targets early in the AFC title game. And then, like, got sniped because he's, he's made of glass and just, like, goes down with an injury. Really aggravating. So, Tony, I think, is, is a good look. Um, he could get hurt on the first play of the game or he could win MVP. It's like, those are his range of outcomes. But Kelsey and Juju, I think, are the two guys to look at in Kansas City. And also Jarek McKinnon receiving yards. Because I think if you're the Chiefs, you're going to want to match up McKinnon with linebackers, right, or safeties that McKinnon can beat in the pass game. I don't think the Eagles, like Avante Maddox, is not 100%. I think Juju can have success in the slot. And Travis Kelsey might be the the best tight end that's ever played the game. I'll take Gronk in my lifetime, but Kelsey is certainly up there, first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, Juju, 37 and a half. That number's come up like five yards over the course of the week. It's probably in the right range now. I would play the over on it. And Kelsey, 78 and a half. I mean, how, how could you ever play the under on Travis Kelsey receiving yards? Like, I'd like to hear the rationale behind that particular bet. It could win, but, like, what's the rationale behind it? And on the Philly side, I'll give you an under here. And it's not that this guy can't go over or have a huge game. This is like the sports betting content space where, like, two smart people early on in the process will give a bet. And now every, everyone has this bet. I wonder why. <laughs> Kenny Gainwell over 19 and a half rushing yards. So Philly, in neutral Uh, situations in games so like they are either up a little down a little or the game is tied they pass the ball way more than expectation right their pass rate over expectation in neutral situations is high so if you think you guys hosting the show the person listening if you think this is going to be a close game one way or the other whoever you think is going to win the game then i think it stands to reason that kenny gainwell will do his damage in the pass game catching the football as opposed to rushing it where he gets his carries and boston scott does also behind miles sanders when Philly is up on the opposition and leaning on them, right, and they start running the football in the second half of games, I think it's going to be a close game. I would play the under on Gainwell. This okay. rushing yard prop is up like nine yards from what it usually is.
Okay. So I am totally with you uh, on Kadarius Tony. I actually think, though, there's even a better opportunity. I think that playing his rushing and receiving total, which is set at 34 like and it. a half, is even better just because Kansas City loves to go with those wide receiver sweeps, uh, especially in ways to avoid pre pressure for Mahomes. Uh, the other... Uh, bet that I wanted to get to in this game uh, in particular that I've looked at a little bit is the total sacks in this game is listed at five and a half. I am currently leaning over uh, just because of how good this Philly line is and I think there's going to be an opportunity at least once or twice just because of who Jalen Hurts is as a quarterback where he's going to get sacked in this game. Where do you fall on kind of that total sacks number? Uh, I think no opinion. I think it's priced really well. Um, just something to keep in mind. Like, the two offensive, like, obviously there could be, I'm not going to bet it, so, like, you're actually registering your opinion with money. I'm not. So your opinion means more. I mean that seriously. Like, the two offensive lines are excellent in this game. That is something to keep in mind. Like, the Eagles' offensive line is great. And remember, like, a couple of years ago, the Chiefs get bludgeoned by the Tampa defensive line in that game, ruins the game for them. They literally went out and, like, spent a ton of money in draft capital on fixing the offensive line. It's a, it's a good line now, so... I'm not going to bet it, but uh, certainly respect your thought on the over there. Nick, do you ever bet MVP or is that a fool's errand? Um, no, I, I, I just think like you have to like think about it going in and like does the bet you're going to make make sense. So this year, I think it's unlikely that a defensive player will win Super Bowl MVP because the total of the game is very high. And generally, and if you think back to like, you know, Von Miller was the last one, or like Dexter Jackson with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or Malcolm Smith with the Seattle Seahawks, right? Some recent like defensive um, winners of Super Bowl MVP. These have been like, the defense has been the story of the team throughout the season, right? And that's not the case with the Eagles. Jalen Hurts is the story of the Eagles. Mahomes is the story of the Kansas City Chiefs. The point total of the game is also starts with a five. So I think it's unlikely that we'll see. It's possible, of course. I just think it's unlikely, so I'd prefer to go elsewhere. On Kansas City, if you're not going to bet Mahomes, and obviously it's most likely that the quarterback will win on either side, right? Yeah. Um, if it's not Mahomes, I think it would be Kelsey, yeah. and you would need him to thread like the, the needle that Cooper Cup did last year to win MVP instead of Matthew Stafford. That needle was Odell Beckham tearing his ACL in the first half of the game, allowing Cup to get even more targets, and also Cup with the singular NFL Films play of the game the game-winning touchdown. Like, otherwise, that probably goes to Stafford, right, um, in last year's game. But Kelsey's certainly capable of doing that. Also keep in mind, Greg Olson is calling the game a former tight end. And if Kelsey has a monster game and the Chiefs win, the conversation is going to start to become, is Travis Kelsey, like, the greatest tight end ever? And, like, that definitely weighs on the mind of, of voters, like, like, the, like the media in the press box. I'm watching the game. So Kelsey for Kansas City, if it's not Mahomes. And for Philly, I'd rather take a shot on Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown because of the price discrepancy. A.J.'s 14, Devontae is 30, but the receiving yards discrepancy between the two is only eight yards in the betting market. So I'd rather go with Devontae Smith, but I do think it is very likely that it's one of the two quarterbacks. If you want to take a long shot, go for it. I, I have no idea what's going to happen in the game in that regard, so go for it. Mm. Nick, I, I like the Devontae Smith thing because he's definitely a big He's more of a big playmaker than uh, A.J. Brown. Just in their offense, he's more of your home run hitter. I'm going with Kansas City in this one. I think it's going to be one of those games because Casey understands you brought this up against Tampa Bay. They have to protect Patrick Mahomes, and I think it's going to come down to the two quarterbacks having, having to throw the football. And for me, I'm just going to lean with Patrick Mahomes, just his ability to make plays in the passing game. I think this game's going to come down to throwing the football and that's why I'm giving the edge to Kansas City, and that's why I bet my money on uh, KC to win this game. It should be. It, I mean, honestly, like if it plays out like that, we're in for an awesome Super Bowl. Also, Shine will cash us over. So uh, I, I, I think it's going to be a great game. Like I actually can't wait for it. Um, and the extracurricular stuff is really fun on the game as well, like that a halftime show and all that good stuff. Are you staying? Is the little lady joining you out there for the game? Are you staying? Uh, I'm flying home tomorrow. Thank God. Get me oh. out of here. I've been to. The, I've covered Super Bowls before at the game. Do you know? Like, I, I, I'm sure. Like, like you guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been. I'm sure Wiggy has. Right. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Like at the two minute warning at the Super Bowl. Like you have to leave your seat to go down to the locker room. So I'm covering. Sorry to say this because I. I know you guys are in Boston, but Super Bowl 46 in Indy. I'm a Giants fan. I'm covering the game at NFL Radio for Sirius, where I worked at the time. And they're like, Yeah, actually, you have to leave your seat right now and like take this like. Like slow ass cargo elevator downstairs to the locker rooms, and I'm like sprinting to the television in time to see like like the hail mary fall incomplete at the end of the game to see my my favorite team win. So very happy to be getting out of here uh, tomorrow. Us, uh, Super Bowl's only good to go down on Thursday night party, Thursday party, Friday party, Saturday, and watch the game wherever you're watching it. Agreed. 
Strong agree. So, Costos, uh, one of my favorite bets to make at the Super Bowl time, especially this year, is an offensive lineman to score a touchdown at 35-1. to 1. I just love the odds, and it's fun to root for a fat guy to score a touchdown. <laughs> is, there any, yeah. is there any one prop or bet in this game that's, you know, 20-1 to 1 or higher that you just love to just play and have fun, enjoy, and hope it hits? And if it doesn't, uh, it's not a big deal. It's just like a pizza money bet. Sure, yeah, I think there are a couple. I actually like your thought on offensive lineman touchdown here. If it's going to be someone on Philadelphia, I think it would be Jordan Mailata. My doctor said Mailata, the left tackle, who used to play like rugby professionally. So I think that he would be the guy that I would choose on Philadelphia. And you can bet like any other uh, Philadelphia player that's not listed to score the first touchdown of the game, which would include an offensive lineman, at, like, at, at an absolutely insane price. So yeah, for like beer or pizza money, I like that. Um, in the anytime touchdown market, you could also play first touchdown. I think any of the Chiefs' backup tight ends that are active, I think are, are pretty good looks. That's Jody Fortson, Bell, and then like some other uh, jabroni whose name I'm forgetting. But like the Chiefs' Noah Gray. backup tight ends, Noah Gray. Actually, like Gray better than than Blake Bell. But like the Chiefs' backup tight ends, Fortson would be my choice down by the goal line. We know that Andy Reid likes to get exotic. Um, so I, I like some of those plays that you're talking about, Shine, for first touchdown of the game. First touchdown. You can play any time as well, just that the odds aren't going to be as good. I mean, there are a lot of bets that I have for this game, and like running through all of them would take a lot of time. I would encourage people, if you're interested, we are doing a full hour on it today on You Better You Bet, like every bet that we have for this game. Like first play of the game, I have bet pass to be the first play, just mm. as like an example of what I'm talking about. The Eagles, again, in neutral situations, pass way more than expected, and Kansas City, like I think, comes out and sets the tone early, trying to like get the ball over the middle, maybe to Kelsey or Juju, maybe to Kadarius Tony on a screen. So like first play of the game pass is something I have bet. Like the menu is extensive. Would make the Cheesecake Factory blush. <laughs> <laughs> what about first Rihanna song? Oh, I love it. I love that this is the question. So this is my sincere hope. It, it, this, uh, this market's gotten blown up the last couple of years by like clout chasing morons in the media <laughs> that like that like one one idiot two years ago, like videoed on his cell phone, the national anthem rehearsal and tweeted it like I'm trying to help gamblers. It's like, no, you clown. You're looking for retweets because you're thirsty for clout. And like last year, last year is got blasted out on an email, like the national anthem time and, and the halftime rehearsals because people are looking for clout. Like what you're supposed to do, like what I would do is bet it with my own money and tell people that bet also. So here's what I'm going to do. I usually get this info on Thursday. I don't have it yet. And I don't know if I'm going to now, which sucks. If I get this info, I will pass it along to Shime and then like do not tell anybody and you guys can bet it if you want also. <laughs> what I have heard is that Rihanna's last song of halftime is gonna be Diamonds. Yes. I cannot confirm that. That has not been like told to me with okay. like supreme confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that was the thought was that it's going to be Diamonds. Okay. The first song, I think, and this is my opinion, which is worth nothing probably, is please don't stop the music would be my guess. Ah, hmm. My hope my hope is that I get this information and then I just bet it and win. See, and I, had it, I, had, I had Run This Town as the first song. Yeah. The problem with Run This Town as the first song is that you would think that Jay-Z would come out for it, and Jay-Z is not coming out for the first song. Mm. Oh, okay. That's a good point. It's going to be work. Right. Okay. okay. I, I have well, a prediction like, no, for you, No, the problem with Costos. work, though, is that, is, that, is that Drake would come out, though. Right. right. But uh, she'll just do the beginning. One, one, one thing ready. that's going to happen, it's never happened in the history of the Super Bowl. Punt return for a touchdown. Book it. <laughs> I, I I don't hate it because you have especially on the you have a jabroni pun, uh, pun, uh, punter right now for the Eagles and Brett Kern yep. and and for Kansas City either Kadarius Tony or Sky Moore returning punts like more than capable of breaking one off I don't I don't hate that play. All right, well it has been our pleasure to have you on the show this year. I cannot. I, the other thing I want to ask you is if before you go is maybe we get you. Uh, I was thinking March Madness. Maybe you come in and live bet with us on a show or something. Would you do that? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think like. We are going to. They have not, like, put a press release out yet, but uh, that's not breaking news. Like, hey, we're the sports betting show. They're going to send us to Vegas for the NCAA tournament. Okay. So we'll be in Vegas the first week of the tournament. Okay. But, yeah, we can work something out. Where I, I would be more than happy to do that with you guys. Okay. I'd just like to hang with you. I think we'd have a lot of fun together. Yeah, I think, you know, I, yeah, d definitely. Definitely. <laughs> a couple high-energy guys. That's it. About. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm always just very, like, when, like, I meet people for the first time, it's like, how, how many drinks do I want to have? So I feel like it would probably be minimal. Yeah. Unless we're having a really good time. So who the hell knows? But yes, I do think it would be a blast. No, I mean stay if we're not having a good time, minimal. If we are having a good good time, it'll be Michael Irvin. <laughs> well, well, I think I think I'd like to stop short in a couple different ways there. Yeah. yeah. Never right. never minimal uh drinks. Always minimal, maximum minimal drinks, sweat. maximum sweats. <laughs> That's what we want here, Nick. All right, Nick. You're the best. 
Hey, and listen, like anytime you guys want to talk an NBA, just feel free. Have Shime text me more than happy to come on. Wishing Ooh. everybody minimal sweats, winning bets, the absolute verity. Best of luck. All right, there he is, Nick Costos, the host of You Better You Bet Odyssey Sports Betting Insights.